Hi, everyone. Welcome to Nimue Exchange. We're going to get started in about 20 or 30 seconds. We just want to let folks in the room. Thank you for joining us today. And while we're waiting to get started, feel free to add where you're joining us from in the chat. We'd love to, to hear where you're coming from. Welcome, welcome. I see some familiar faces or some familiar names, I should say. Thanks for joining us and welcome to those who may be new to Nimwa programs online. Hi, everybody. I'm Addie Gayoso. I'm Nimwa's senior educator. Welcome to Nimwa Exchange, a spinoff of the award-winning pandemic live stream series, BMA Nimwa. My regular co-host, Jenny Trainer, Nimwa's associate curator, is back with me today. Hey, Jenny. Thanks for being with us. Um, each month, for those of you who have joined us before, you know that NIMWA is joined by special guests to center women creatives. We consider topics relevant to our world and offer insight into collaborations NIMWA is fostering while its building is closed for renovation. During this time of change, we are excited to exchange ideas with our guests and viewers. Last month on International Women's Day, we spoke with painter Cassie Nomoda to learn more about her distinctive approach to visual storytelling, as well as to learn more about her collaboration with J. Crew. To watch our episode with Cassie and all of our past episodes of Nimwa Exchange, you can visit us on Nimwa's YouTube channel, and I'll share the link in just a second in the chat. Hi, Addie. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm happy to be back with you guys today. I missed last month's um, episode, which I heard was fantastic. So I'm really happy to be back. Uh, today, we are speaking with London-based illustrator and photographer, Michaela Cianci. Michaela was born in Padua, Italy, and raised in Cambridge, England. Her most recent works are detailed digital drawings, which feature imagined, often surreal landscapes. Nimwa's Museum Shop partnered with Michaela to create collection-inspired and imagination-inspiring products. And you can find a link to those in the chat. Nimwa's Museum uh, Shop Director, Adriana Regalado, is also joining us to share more about the shop's history and future for partnering with artists and makers. So thanks to both of you, Michaela and Adriana, for joining us today. Hi, happy to be here. Hello, everyone. Hey, Michaela. Hey, Adriana. Hi, Thank yeah. you, Thanks for being here. And just a couple of quick notes for those who are tuning in. As always, we've enabled live transcription, which you can show or hide if you go to the bottom of your screen and click the CC button in Zoom. Also, feel free to add your questions either in the chat or in the Q&A, and we will do our best to address them at the end of, by the end of our show today. So thank you all so much. So Michaela, thank you. It's been so lovely to, to get to know you in the process of developing this show. We're, we're so glad you're here. Uh, the works, yeah, thanks so much. Um, the works that we're focused on today are um, your digital illustrations, and these are the works by, um, by you that really caught Adriana's eye as well. You are also a photographer, so I'm curious. I'd love to hear more about what brought you to digital illustration. Can you tell us a little bit about, about that? That'd be great. Well, bef before I was a photographer, I, I was an artist many years ago. But I did find the whole experience uh, a little bit uh, solitary. I think when I was in my 20s, perhaps sitting for hours and hours developing my art was um, sort of not quite suitable to my lifestyle. So that's how I transitioned into photography. And it was kind of the opposite. So when lockdown came along, it really gave me um, an opportunity to um, just focus on my art. I didn't have any work. I was very, very solitary. Uh, because of the situation so uh yeah that that I just dived into it mm -hmm. after many years of um having had to put my art aside really it's interesting to think about how you are very much you know when you're a photographer you're very much recording sort of the world around you right and you sort of not only transition to a very different media in a lot of respects, but also a different way of sort of storytelling. And I particularly love this work that we have, um, we're sharing right now. And I'm wondering if you tell a little bit of more, more about this piece in particular, and also just about your process. Like, how do you go about creating these works? Well, I just, I, I literally tend, I tend to start with something that I, that just piques my interest 
to do with what something that might be happening in my life. I think this one specifically came about because of that statue of the state slave trader that was dumped into the sea in Bristol Harbour. Um, and it just uh, gave me a little idea which I just developed you know, into this drawing. And also simultaneously with this, around the same time, and one of my favorite actresses passed away. So I just kind of stuck her in the drawing. That's, that's kind of how my process goes. Whatever happens to be kind of on my mind or preoccupying me will we'll go into the, it will just be, become part of the drawing. Well, now I have to know who the actress was. Oh, did I not say Helen McCrory? <laughs> and and where is she? She's riding the, the sea serpent. Oh, I see. Yeah. <laughs> have you not seen Peaky Blinders? Well, she's done lots of stuff, of course, but she's quite well known for that, unfortunately. And I was, you know, how sometimes we're quite affected when someone we admire yeah. passes away or, and it affected me. So I thought I'm going to put her in my drawing. Yeah, no, I have a little that. tribute. Yeah. And what about the title of this work? Ozymandias is, um, it's the title of a poem by Shelley, mm -hmm. uh, which um, I don't know, I think in a way, I was maybe trying to get at the idea that all power crumbles eventually. I think that might be um, mm -hmm. how I interpreted the poem and mm -hmm. perhaps all that's left of these grand works of art that, you know, champion those power structures. So in a way it's kind of relevant to what we hope might happen today. Yeah. In certain yeah. parts of the world. Right. And, and is happening. And is happening. Yeah. Different aspects. So, you know, not that I look for profound, to make profound statements. It's just, it's almost like afterwards, I kind of think, oh, that's what that was about, you know? Yeah, well, these events definitely have a way of kind of, you mm. know, permeating our everyday lives, right? It becomes kind of part of the zeitgeist of our, of our moments. Absolutely. Personal yeah. and um, sort of societal things. Yeah. Issues. Yeah. Adriana, um, I'm interested to hear about how you came across Michaela's work and what what drew you to it. Um, well, initially, a coworker, um, my my um, partner in the shop, Tom, showed me her work. We were kind of doing some research on future artists that we were interested in or possibly wanted to collaborate with. Um, so he had found her on Instagram and. Yeah, I think for me, a lot of uh, times the people I like to work with, um, whether designs or illustrations or work I like, is just it's kind of a gut reaction. So I remember like looking at her work amongst many other people and just being like, oh, just kind of struck me. Um, but I think what I really enjoyed was as I started to like look deeper and deeper at all the different uh, works that she has, they just kind of get absorbed in them. Uh, you kind of get lost in the details, um, which there are so many fun little details in, in a lot of the different works. And I think every single time you look at one, you'll notice something different. Um, I was also just really impressed um, with how she makes the compositions work. I think that sometimes these images will seem like everyone's like, oh, I could do that. Um, but I think to make something feel balanced and compositionally work like that is actually very difficult. Um, so I was, I was really attracted to that, but then I became even more attracted to all of her work after I kind of started to get to know her and just kind of her personality and how she creates these and, and um, it just, I started to, to fall in love more and more with, with all of them. That's so nice. Thank you. <laughs> <Aww>. <laughs> That's so nice. So, I mean, we um, Oh yeah, Michaela, I think Adriana touched a little bit on sort of your, your process. And I'd love if you could talk a little bit more about how these are made um, and what tools you use, what techniques you use. Yeah, well, um, given that I went back to this during lockdown, I, it, there was no sort of intention behind it. I just was looking for something to occupy my time. I like to keep really busy. So I just used the tools that I use for editing my photographs. I have a Wacom tablet that I used with a pen that I use for photo editing, you know, a little bit of touching up here and there. Um, so I just started doodling on that and um, just amusing myself. It took a little bit of time, obviously, to, to learn to handle the line. And, um, but I, you know, as I said, I was just doing it for my own pleasure. So um, 
yeah, I've, I've become quite fluent now. It didn't start off that way, put it that way. <laughs> yeah, that was something that um, also impressed me. When I first was looking at these, I didn't, I couldn't tell if they were digital illustrations or hand-drawn ink and, and paper illustrations. Um, so after learning that they were just digital illustrations, it was, it was, it was awesome. Yeah, in fact, um, a lot of people message me and ask what my medium is, uh, which, I mean, I really um, was, you know, I really wanted to stick to the idea of hand-drawn stuff in a way, but I like to use, um, you know, like, I think this is the, this is the medium of our age, digital uh, artwork is, is part of, you know, our, our the, the tools that are available to us that weren't available 20 years ago or so on. So I'm, I'm keen to use uh, what's available to me, but I still like that hand-drawn feel. Um, and, uh, and also no waste, <laughs> no wasted paper. I'd have gone through thousands and thousands of notebooks. God That's knows how point. many pens. I know it's a, it seems like a minor, but actually for me, that was, you know, it's quite a valid point. Yeah, no, it, it definitely, it, it, it adds up. Yeah, certainly. Production. Yeah. Um, I had the pleasure of seeing one of your prints in person. And yeah, I was I was blown away. I was trying to figure out it, is it a woodcut? Is it, you know, lithograph? Like what what is it? And Adriana was like, no, it's it's all digital. But even like the quality of the print is so uh, luscious, mm. for, for lack of a better word. I mean, they're really just well, I get them print. I get them printed at the the per people that do my um, photography prints. You mm. know, beautiful black and white. And uh, I mean, I've no idea what other uh, digital artists do, but I I kn know that the quality of their paper and their inks are really good. So I was so I was more excited when I saw my first when I had my first print made, and I thought, oh no, this is these are sort of these are great. I could see yeah. they were, yeah, the actual prints are. They look so much better in the. Yeah, they look amazing in person. Like the color yeah. is like super rich. Like it's yes. just yeah. kind of like a velvety rich, whatever. Cause I know you do a lot of these in, in one tone. Um, yeah. There's there's like another blue one that I know will show um, in a little bit. It's it's such a rich tone. It's beautiful. Yeah, 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 yeah. definitely. I, the, the, the actual prints are, uh, I'm very proud of them. Yeah, they, yeah. Look, they look great. Yeah, there is a nice saturation. Mm. Of color yeah yeah it's also the paper as well it's that that sort of uh, like watercolor paper it's quite heavy mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think there's you know it got me this got me I haven't had the privilege of seeing one of your works in person but I'm looking forward to it but it Ginny it got me thinking a little bit more about um positive fragmentation which is a show right now on exhibition that Ginny curated and um the museum is closed but we're we're kindly sort of inhabiting um the museum at American University but just all of the works in that show are prints and thinking about sort of um, sort of the, the collaboration, the work that goes into actually making um, not just sort of the matrix, but also sort of working, the artists working with printmakers and making decisions about the quality of the ink and the type of paper and how all of those decisions are extraordinarily important. And so I think about that, um, you know, when, when we look at images and it, you know, the artists mentioned very specific paper or very specific kinds of yes. things, um, because it's also, it's so, so much part of the, the tactile experience of being with a print. So I appreciate, appreciate your works and I can't wait to see them in person. Yeah, you definitely get a bit, um, yeah. a bit particular about the type of paper and <laughs> I use one particular, German etching. It's, um, it's, it just, that's the paper that gives that velvety tone to the ink. It's, it's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, that sort of interaction between the ink and the, the paper is really beautiful. You're, yeah. you're, so, you're so right, Addie. That's kind of like a, a trusting, like a you have to trust the person you're working with. And that's kind of yeah. like you taking your process and bringing someone else along towards the end of that of that journey. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah. It's a really cool part of, a, of this to think about. Yeah, and I think it's just like, yeah, thank you for bringing that up. This idea of like, there's collaboration on top of collaboration here, right? Michaela, I think it was interesting to think about you or hear you talk about how um, photography is sort of this like isolating, you know, process, but with this, you know, kind of printmaking and you're sort of engaging and with different folks. And then, and now your sort of relationship with Adriana and the shop, it's really beautiful to see the ways in which. Um, yeah, I mean. Being a printmaker having, blossoms, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, having products made out of my prints has been like super exciting. You know, that, um, 
that kind of I'm, I, I mean I'm hoping to have another really nice collaboration coming up this year but um, because you're bringing somebody else's skills I would never be able to figure out how to make a t-shirt or a I just haven't got I can do I can do compositions print wise as Adriana says but I can't see how to adapt them and and you bring someone like Adriana in and, and they created this these lovely products with with my images on them it's great I love this idea of um you know ever since they were first invented you know prints have have been um inherently kind of democratizing, right? I mean, it was a um, way to share images, information, text, um, kind of to, to a wider public. It was more accessible to everyone. It wasn't just, you know, for the elites. And thinking about prints today, and this is, you know, one thing that comes up in the, in the exhibition at AU as well, is that it's, um, you know, there, there's something, there is the collaboration, right? But then there's also this, um, this accessibility issue. And I love how um, women, especially women artists are kind of pushing the boundaries of what prints are, right? And what we consider prints. And I see your work as part of that, um, not only because of the technique, which is digital, but how then it's applied to all of these different things. And I'm just wondering for you, is that an important aspect of your work, the, the kind of um, the accessible price points of your work and the fact that your designs can be featured then on, on multiple items? Yeah, I, I love it. I mean, that, that's definitely a, a huge plus of doing digital work. Um, it just means that people that don't have a ton of disposable income can still buy a nice piece of artwork and... Uh, um. I mean, hopefully they'll appreciate, they are limited editions, so they, they, there's a limit to how many I'll sell. And then um, I don't know what, whether I have to throw away the, the original file, maybe. Mm. I, um, but uh, no, that's, it, it's, it definitely suits me. Yeah. Uh, you know, originally I did start as an oil painter, but the idea of doing one oil painting and hoping to sell it for a high, high enough sum, um, was more problematic for me I think it can take a lifetime to get to that stage whereas maybe selling you know a hundred limited edition prints for a fraction of the price to people who love art but don't have a ton of money is um, much more appealing to me yeah, yeah. you're kind of multiplying the joy right <laughs> like the more yeah people. definitely exactly. I yeah. just love it. I mean I, I love the idea of my prints being in pe on people's walls obviously it wouldn't what artist doesn't yeah, I actually, there's a great question in the Q&A and I thought we kind of jump to it now. And it may be a question for both you and Adriana. Uh, it says, how do you decide um, when to print your works on something other than paper? I clicked through the link in the chat um, to see the works in the shop and notice it's somewhere on a clock, on a throw. So curious about sort of how you all decided um, what, what your works would be printed on and why. Um, well, for the, for the shop, um... We kind of, she created um, one special artwork for us specifically. Um, mm -hmm. And it's always a little bit hard um, because working or collaborating with artists like uh, Michaela's style is, like, I don't want to limit what she can do by being like, oh, I want to do a t-shirt. So, you know, kind of um, limiting her in that way. I always, I'm, I, I've always found it really interesting to collaborate with artists because I want to give them the freedom and then kind of take their design, uh, let them design what kind of comes to them um, and then take their design and, and, and see what it works for. But some artists actually prefer that we give them the, the direction. They're like, well, you know, because um, that helps them design. Um, they don't like the, the blank page effect. Um, so with Michaela specifically, I mean, I, I think she designed something very quickly. It was super impressive. Um, uh, as she mentioned earlier, she just has this well of ideas. Um, so that image specifically that she created for us was kind of, a, I think it was like a kind of square rectangle image. Um, and she was okay with cropping and we had had that conversation before. Um, so it was a kind of a surrealist work. So that's one of the reasons it was printed on a clock because it was kind of, uh, fitting thematically with the work. It's just kind of a trippy clock. You kind of can't tell what time it is. So it's kind of a, a fun product in that sense. 
Um, and the other one uh, that we also felt kind of fit thematically was a puzzle because it was also kind of just like all these pieces and uh, just kind of having to put this 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 picture to back together uh, we thought was was fun. Um, but for example, like though we tend to like to make shirts sure for the shop, we didn't feel like this would be an appropriate image for the shop because there's so much detail to it. Like you kind of have to like it, it would it just wouldn't work well on a shirt. So um, in, in terms of at least for me, that's kind of how I uh, work. I, I work closely with the artists trying to fit their theme and, and their style um, in terms of the actual companies we use to do that work, we're always trying to source different companies. Um, I mean, there's there's tons of people that print and, and do things, but we always try to find um, uh, uh, companies that will obviously kind of like Michaela and her printer that, that, that do these things really well. And I would rather pay a little bit more to have something produced at, a, at an amazing quality than, than produce something terrible. Yeah, I, I, um, I, a friend of mine actually did buy your blanket, which of course I haven't seen. And, um, and so I, I got to say, oh, how is the, and he said the quality is beautiful. And, you know, so, but of course I trusted that. I mean, and that, and that sometimes it's, it's a little scary because a lot of that stuff we're um, starting to experiment. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, we haven't, you know, uh, I do think everything and anything that comes to mind can be produced, but um you know, I can't, I, we don't have unlimited funds to, to have or to outsource this project to tons of people. So um, it's always a, a little scary when you're working with someone new. Um, yeah, on well, I've, yeah, worked, worked well though, didn't it? I mean, I, yeah. I definitely think that I'm better off and um, staying out of anything to do with products. I, I'm happy to give my illustrations, but I have tried designing things for t-shirts and so on. And it doesn't go so well, <laughs> maybe because my images are quite complex. Um, so, in, you know, future collaborations, I'd always look for somebody who's got um, a sort of objective eye and can knows how to adapt my stuff. Love the idea of doing more, though. I would love to do plates and, you know, it's... Yeah, it's we, we, I think that would be an amazing set of plates. Yeah. 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 Yes. <laughs> I just want to make sure I have the right image up here. So the the image on the right, Michaela's image, that's the one that she did for for us specifically. For yes, and then she also allowed um, us to. Uh, she gave us another image that she had previously created that she also allowed us to print on um, on on products. But we didn't do um, more than a blanket for that image. Uh, mm. we that, that was a, that's a tricky yeah. image. In fact, it's appealing, but it's it's hard to. And and I actually did get. Um, this uh sampled into a scarf and i am looking to have it printed they came out amazing because you know i imagine um it's, it's a it's a nice large scarf but oh, when wrapped around it it looks like a beautiful pattern um also oh, since there's only wonderful. one yeah. oh my god that's exciting well well i i think i may be doing a collaboration for some scarves with with somebody else this year so uh, it makes uh, a little sense <laughs> Because the, I think the, the images as they are just would work, you know, especially in the mm -hmm. two tones. Yeah, yeah. Sure. I, sure. I love that um, Adriana is saying that, you know, this image is on the clock, a clock, which I love. Like, yes. it's a really thoughtful, it's clearly <laughs> like your decisions are very thoughtful in terms of honoring the design and, you know, sort of the artist's, you know, original intent. Um, but also this playful idea of like, I don't know, I think about like um, a melting clock or this yes. notion of yeah, time. Yeah. And so I really like, I love hearing from a colleague who I talk to really regularly uh, more about this because that was new to me. And even the, the piece that's on the blanket, it's sort of these two figures that almost feel like they're tumbling. So this idea of like being yeah. thrown or throwing, I think there's these oh, plays yes. on words and terms, which I think is fun. Now yeah. this, as Adriana mentioned, Michaela, this particular piece on the right that you created was inspired by a work in our permanent collection by surrealist artist, Leonora Carrington. And I'm curious, maybe if you can talk a little bit more about your interest in Carrington or surrealism more generally, and um, talk a little bit about this composition in, in comparison to her composition. Well, I, I love, I, I love Leonora Carrington. I love, I f would call myself, I guess, a surrealist artist. Um, so she, you know, I identify with her work. I, I tune into her vibe. I just feel like she's a kindred spirit. And this particular, I was so pleased when I spotted this painting because it just straight away, 
um, resonated with me. It reminded me of a house in S Sussex that I have a very personal connection to and the, ha the family. I worked with them for a year doing a photographic project. And that's why I did the drawing so quickly because it was just like, bang, this looks like Petworth Park. That looks like mm -hmm. Petworth House. And so many of my sort of personal references went into it. So it really shows how, even though I departed from my plan to be an artist and went into photography, it all feeds into this, the creative process one way or another. I mean, the procession to the lake specifically references a wedding I photographed at this stately home, which, um, which this, Leonora Carrington's work reminded me of and uh, just her sort of her sort of fantastical landscapes um, her her sort of ghostly figures they all um, they feel like characters that would fit into any of my drawings really um, so that's that that was that was a, a result <laughs> <laughs> when um, Adriana said, you know, is there something in the collection that might inspire a piece? So That's fantastic. I love this that in a way you're having, you know, this piece about uh, by Carrington on the left is depicting her childhood home. And so it's very sort of rooted in her reality as much as it's rooted in fantasy right. and sort of mysticism as well. Um, so I right. love that you're you're having this conversation with her across time, um, and you're also infusing your own personal experience into a landscape that was sort of an imagined one for her. I also, Michaela and I discovered, so I'm going to throw this out there, Michaela, happy birthday, because you just <laughs> celebrated your birthday recently, and we Thanks. learned that um, Leonora Carrington's birthday was in within like three or four days of yours, yeah. so I feel like the stars yes. were aligned. Yes, oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. There's there's <laughs> like a some sort of similarity there. Both Aries, I guess, if that's your thing. And um yeah, it just made me feel, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> she would be an Aries. <laughs> no, I think she's a little bit more out there than I am, having looked at <laughs> so many of her. I'm she's she's a little bit more in her own world than I am, but um but I certainly wouldn't mind wandering through her her landscapes you know for sure yeah we actually have a little bit more information on the next slide about Carrington for those of you who are unfamiliar with her we just sort of wanted to position it um for work we actually have four pieces in our collection by her um and she was really considered one of the only female surrealists um are you able to advance Jenny yeah just so everyone can kind of get a sense a little bit more about Carrington. I don't know all of a sudden my computer is frozen I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. No worries. Well, so it actually just brings me to another question, actually, Michaela. There. So, um, oh, oh, there we go. So a little bit more information about Carrington and the image of her at top left. And then we see three additional works in our collection by her. Um, but I just, we wanted to sort of give a nod to her, given that it was her birthday recently and she was an inspiration for you. Um, and she really was one of the only surrealist artists, um, only women surrealist artists sort of recognized yeah. by the group. Um, but going back a little bit to, um, you know, clearly this was a direct um, sort of inspiration, but your works generally, there have definitely have nods to Western art history, like the, the Annunciation we saw a few images ago um, where Angel Gabriel is talking to, the, to, to Mary and, you know, there's some other sort of nods. I, I see like I don't know, I see Hieronymus Bosch in your work. I see a lot of like layers of like of art history. And I'm curious if you can talk a little bit more about, about sort of your inspiration more broadly. Well, definitely um, Renaissance arts, yeah. a big influence, especially their compositions, actually, those kind of vistas mm -hmm. and, uh, and the sort of, you know, the mountains and the little medieval towns in the background. And uh, I, I'm very drawn to those classical um, compositions and uh, perhaps it's from seeing you know coming from an Italian background and seeing lots of <laughs> Caravaggio's in churches and stuff which bored me to tears when I, or I thought bored me to tears when I was a kid but then it, it just permeates your um, you know your memories and comes out some other way so uh, I think it's even come out in my photography I think my portraits are quite classical quite renaissance-y um, so I would say that's a big influence. Surrealism of all kinds. Love Hieronymus Bosch. 
Um, actually, I love pop art too. You know, I, I, um, I, I think a sense of humor is kind of, uh, you know, something I try to um, imbue my art with, or maybe it just percolates through one way or another. Um, and then of course, just one of the benefits of social media is that you can get inspiration daily from all these fantastic artists that are putting their stuff out there. Um, so uh, one, one young English artist I really like is a girl called Olivia Kemp who does very large detailed pencil drawings. I've just come across her fairly recently, but um, her, I mean, her drawings make mine look undetailed they're so detailed but um but they're you know that's definitely something i'm drawn to that kind of hyper detail not necessarily realism but um but yeah there's there's lots of great new work out there as well as a whole history to to delve into there's a renaissance the, the little ugly baby in the tree somebody said he was ugly i don't think he's ugly <laughs> but it is well a italian thing. renaissance art to be fair is <laughs> Of ugly babies. I know. <laughs> I I don't know if artists in the Renaissance had never seen an actual baby or <laughs> what the problem was, but man, maybe they had to get someone to pose who was an adult and just shrink them down. <laughs> they often know. do look like little old men. Yeah, no, yeah they do. Your baby is is very cute. And I think he's cute, but you know. If people don't concur, I say there's a tradition of ugly babies that goes back <laughs> a long way. <laughs> and that's what but you're he's tapping the into. Mother, he's beautiful. <laughs> yeah. I also yeah. notice lots of cats. Mm -hmm. Really? I thought so that's uh, kind of, uh, you're pointing that out to me, I think. Uh, <laughs> really? I, I, because I don't have any plan and I come to these drawings just, you know, just with a starting off doodling, I'm kind of surprised at what has come out, you know. Hmm. Quite often oh. the figures are a little bit voyeuristic, I've noticed. <laughs> There's always um, someone peeking or spying or I don't know what that means. But well that's what cats do. Right? Well, I mean, cats. I think if you are a, you know a photographer, you kind of are always yes. maybe it's kind of a, a conversation with that. You are kind of always looking or peeking at people through a lens. Yes, mm -hmm. a little bit on the outside, a little bit that's so interesting I just noticed it seems to be a bit of a running thing but I think it's it's interesting that you don't often artists perhaps don't really know why they draw the things they do okay. so and quite often my female figures are also seem to be like in a state of anticipating something you know waiting for someone to arrive yeah. or um but this is only looking back at, you know, the, the work I've done in the past year and thinking, oh, I don't know where this these is, ideas um, This is the work Jenny saw in person, which I think in oh. is a uh, much richer, uh, if we're yes. talking about just like a really nice blue. Um, it's, it's just fun to look at. I think that's um, something you mentioned too, that you were talking about that it, you, you don't necessarily want to get super heavy in these pieces and you kind of keep it no. fun and- yeah. uh, I, that was something that at least came across to me, I think, in, in earlier conversations we had had. Mm -hmm. I, I told you, it's just, I, I enjoy looking at them. They don't make yeah. me sad. Like when no, I look no, at no. any of your works, I'm never like, oh, I'm depressed. Sometimes no. there are a lot <laughs> no. of works I look at, I'm like, that's beautiful, but yeah. that is no, that's really down my mood. This I just wish. kind of always uplifts me. Like, it's just, I don't know, it's kind of relaxing or uplifting to me. Well, I, it, yeah. it, it was definitely a a form of escapism, especially during lockdown. So I wasn't going to create sad, miserable worlds. I wanted to go into a magical place and um, amuse amuse myself, I suppose. <laughs> but I think I think um, you know th there needs to be a certain element of thought provo provokingness. Mm -hmm. Was that a word mm -hmm. um, for a, for a piece of any piece of art to be interesting. So, but I don't think necessarily you can plan for that. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously this is, a, to me, is to do with wanting, wishing one could stay, stay young, I, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, respecting the cycle of, of time. Um, but many women as they get older do wish they could, <laughs> go back a bit maybe 
Maybe drink from the fountain of youth. I don't know. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it starts out as something and then the idea develops as, as I go along. I think this was the the cafe one was the first proper detailed drawing I did during lockdown. So I think I might have been missing, missing having a social life. <laughs> I just love all the like the minute details, you know, like the the little just like a rat, you know, like the mouse hole or oh, mouse yeah. house at the bottom, right? I mean, I just think these reveal themselves over time, which I think is a sign of like really wonderful art to me is just that every time you return to it, you're sort of discovering or anticipating something new. And I think that's really lovely. Like I've seen, I've looked at this work a lot, and this is the first time I've noticed like the fly. Um, on the top right corner. I mean, there's just, it does sort of reveal itself over time, um, which is really, it's a joy. It's like a journey going through your works. I mean, there are a lot of yeah, I, I so. like to put more than one story into, yeah. you know, put several different smaller stories within the overall. And also it's, it's a little bit hard to know when to stop, to be honest. I think that's a big question people have for artists, right? Is like, how do you know when a composition is complete? Um, yeah. And yeah, and how do you know? And so for you, it's a challenge to, to decide when it's, it's done. A, it's a challenge. I'm always like, oh, I'm just going to put another little creature in or another little, you know, there's a window there. Can I put, stick a little story of some kind in there? Um, but obviously you can overcrowd, mm -hmm. or, you know, it can go a bit wrong. It can... Yeah, it's 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 a, it's quite. I mean, I'm only thinking about this now. It's sort of hard to to know when a drawing works and when it uh, mm -hmm. and when it's gone overboard or. Um, that last one we were looking at, um, actually, I, I what I liked about it too is you can't actually tell a time period from that. Um, mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me this of obviously one. like France, like you know Toulouse Lautrec, but the mm -hmm. figures also look very modern, but but not at the same time. So I'm just like, there's not. Uh, you know, it could be, I could see like Picasso and that whole group of, of friends sitting at that cafe, but it could yeah. also be like me and my friends sitting at that cafe. Mm -hmm. um, so I think just the fact that I can't, I can't put a time period. It is just another, another little world, but mm -hmm. it has so many things rooted in, in this world. Yeah. Well, there, there's, there's no rules when you're drawing, you know, you can do what you like. You can make it up as you go along. I mean, that's the, that's the joy. It's not quite the same as photography where, you know, you're stuck with what's there and what your machine can record. With drawings, it's it's sort of infinite. Actually, that brings a that brings up a question for me, Michaela. Is um, I mean, I'm not I I don't create digital illustrations, and I'm thinking about traditional printmakers when they make a mark on a, on a stone or on a, another matrix. It's sort of there, and it's like you know whether they want it to be there or not. It's sort of it's been you know imbued, but like. How do you, if you're not happy with something you've added to, do you, do you make versions of your drawings? Do you add well, it you, or remove? Yeah. I do, I do make versions. I also um, have sort of pieces dotted about in a sort of archive of details that I can then, but oh. um, obviously I can, I can erase things and move things around. This mm -hmm. is, it took me a while to kind of realize I can just move a figure from one part of the page to another. So at, at the beginning, I, was treating it a little bit more like a normal piece of paper that I couldn't. And then I realized, hang on a minute, I can, I can move, I can just drag this figure over here. So <laughs> now I do play about with the composition a little bit. I think, does this figure look better here? You can enlarge and reduce figures to see what the scale looks like. And um, I, yeah, that's something I've been, yeah, as I said, I was so caught in thinking I had, to work as if I was working on a page. It took me a while to figure that out. Yeah. But the one thing I can't do is once I've selected a, a color, you can't sort of, you know, you can't take images from other colored and swap them and put them into, I at least I haven't figured out how to do that. Mm -hmm. So um, so I'm, I'm stuck with the color I'm working in, which I think is, you know, it's good to have some restriction so yeah, I mean, yeah, parameter of some kind. Yeah, helpful, I mean, right? it's great to have no parameters, but on the other hand, then when I look at that artist I was um, telling you about, uh, Olivia Kemp, she literally, I don't think she has much of a plan. She starts in one corner and she does mm -hmm. in pencil on a sheet of paper and she has to kind of accommodate her mistakes, whereas I can erase mine. So there is an interesting, um, I mean, I'm, 
I'd rather work the way I work. At least that's how I've developed. I mean, wow. Well, thank you for introducing us to another woman artist. Yeah, that's no, awesome. I'm going to put her amazing. information in the chat, actually, so everyone can take a look at her work. It looks yeah, amazing. Yeah, she, she's amazing. Livy yeah. Livy Kemp, I think she's known as on at least on social media. We have so I I mean we're we had such a lovely conversation. And I just want to thank you again for taking the time with us and Adriana as well. Thank you for being with us. And I know we, we're going to have to wrap up soon, but I just wanted oh, yeah. to, for both of you, just talk a little bit about sort of what's next, right? So Michaela, we actually had a question in the chat or in the Q and A. Someone was asking, um, do you, or um, have you thought about selling your files as NFTs? Is that something that's crossed your mind? <laughs> yeah, well, yes. <laughs> it's a bit of a minefield and I have to I think I have to research it quite thoroughly before I I have sold one F NFT but but um it's not part of my actual collection and I think possibly in the future I would sell an NFT with a, a hard copy print maybe or something along those lines so uh, this year I'm going to look into it but I I really want to to know what I'm talking about before I jump in. <laughs> That's totally fair. It's such a yeah. foreign, foreign concept. Even it's to foreign me. Concept. We're so used I'm to still... like objects, right? Yeah. Like that's, that's I... what we do. So. Yeah. I am still struggling with the basic concept, to be honest. So, um, so that is something I, yeah, I need for the future. Yeah, my 10 year old asked me to explain it to her the other day, and I was like, whoa. <laughs> My Italian, well, my it's because I don't understand it either. I have a cousin in Italy, a, a young guy, he's 16 years old, and he does all the programming for NFTs, whatever that means. And um, he's a little bit of a genius. And I, you can, I can really feel that I am very behind the times. So I have antiquated thinking. He's tried to explain it to me. I'm still like, uh, okay, <laughs> you'll need to explain it to me again. <laughs> so. <laughs> Michaela, if folks want to follow you, um, what is your, um, what's your Instagram handle so folks can uh, follow you? Um, Mika hyphen illustration. Okay, we'll put it in the chat, absolutely. And um, Adriana, do you want to tell us just really quickly about sort of what's next? I know that you maybe talk a little bit about the history of partnerships with artists. Uh, this is something that's gone on for quite a while and you've shepherded and, and sort of what's next for the shop in terms of working with artists. Um, yeah, I mean, we're always, we've been collaborating with artists for a long time. Um, sometimes we just carry their already existing products. And sometimes um, if, if time allows, because we are a very small, small team, um, I love being able to create um, new collections. I think it's a, it's a really great way of promoting emerging artists um, and kind of furthering the museum's mission of uh, championing women through the arts, um, introducing um, the emerging artists to a larger, to our, to our museum audience. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm always looking, um, you know, I'm always stalking Instagram, TikTok, looking, <laughs> looking, looking for artists. That's where I'm at right now. Just looking for that next um, a gut reaction though. I mean, I would still love to continue collaborating with Michaela. So. Yay! <laughs> I mean, it's incredible that, that we stumbled upon each other through Instagram. I mean, that's, that's also um, was such a, a gift really. I mean, you think, you, you know, you, you think you're just trundling along and then something wonderful like that happens. So. I mean, I think that is one of the cool things about the digital yeah. world and what it, I mean, yeah, you live in the UK, I live here and, and, and yes. you've been able to, you know, connect and have so many amazing conversations. So yeah, uh, definitely, yeah. definitely. It was a, the, the highlight of um, last winter <laughs> was meeting you, let alone doing the work. <laughs> <laughs> I want to thank you so much for joining us and um you know it's just been such a pleasure to get to know your work more and to learn thank actually you. more about the shop's process um in terms of working with different artists um and we're glad thanks for being back Ginny we're glad you're you're back with us <laughs> um and we just want to mark our calendar for next month our next episode of Nimo Exchange is on Tuesday May 10th at 12 noon eastern um, and we'll be speaking with DC-based artist, Ms. Shalev, um, whose four-story mural, Reseated, A Forest Floor Flow, is presented on the museum's exterior through July 31st. Hannah Shambroom, NIMWA's ex um, exhibitions coordinator, will also join us to share more about her Lookouts project, which is a series of public art installations that will be going up on the exterior of our building while we're waiting for it to reopen. 
and I'll share the link. And if anyone has any other questions, let us know in the chat or in the Q&A. But otherwise, thank you so much for joining us. And it was a pleasure as always. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. Bye. Take care, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Michaela.